welcome to another jam-packed episode of the Sports Card Nation podcast. The show that brings you all the important news from the sports card hobby. We'll have some debates, opinions, new release schedules, and info. Plus, we'll also discuss the sports that so directly affect the hobby we all love. We'll mix in an occasional gambling tip or two, throw in some life stuff, and bring you great guest interviews from the hobby and sports dignitaries. And if you're good listeners, we may even give away a few things now and then. Now, here's the guy who wanted the cards and not, not the, the gum. gum, John Newman. Hello, Newman. Hello, Newman. Hello, Newman. Well, hello there, Sports Card Nation Podcast. Back again, episode 31. Continuing every week as we set out to do. Great show uh, today. Uh, going to be joined by Ken Carl, a sports uh, artist and illustrator, and his work has, has made the rounds on all the social media. If you have anything to do with the hobby, whether it's in uh, a little bit or a lot, you've seen his work uh, predominantly. He's one of the top sports artists uh, in the industry. He's going to join the show today and really give us a look into that world and and kind of where how he got started and, and how busy he, he really is. Uh, I don't think people always realize that. And uh, he's a great guy, too, and, and that's always uh, it's always nice to see great people, good people uh, succeeding and, and be successful. It's easy uh, to root for guys uh, and people like that. And, and Ken's one of those uh, people, and he's really a nice guy and a good guy. So uh, I'm honored that uh, he made some time for us. So he'll be on the show uh, later on. Um, a lot of sports news, uh, you know, NBA draft, some trades, uh, even in the other sports, we've got, uh, champions crowned and, uh, very heavy sports week and, and hobby wise, we got, uh, Babe Ruth Jersey, uh, bringing some crazy money. Um, I'm going to tell you why I think, uh, tops has jumped the shark and, um, was hoping uh, they wouldn't have done this, and I think it it hurts uh, their living set product. And in, in my mind, in my estimation, I could be wrong, but we'll talk a little bit uh, about that as well. Um, nothing too uh, nothing too new to report on the trimming and, and grading card scandal. So we're really probably going to not really bring that up this week. Like I said on previous shows, if there's nothing. New, I'm not going to just keep beating a dead horse like some other programs might. So, if something new arises, you'll hear it. If not, we'll just continue to move forward as the hobby. And and I really think, as bad as these things are, I think, you know, in the end, the hobby uh, should come out stronger all because of it. So, uh, so we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna dance with that uh, date today as as i'll say so we got a lot a lot of good things to talk about like i said ken carl joins the program um and he's uh going to do a a piece for the show so i'm excited uh about that so look for that uh coming soon as well we are also going to announce the winner of the 20 dollar break credit to deep fried breaks blake as always doing a great job with that company and someone today on this very show is going to win a $20 credit to get in on one of Blake's famous breaks. And uh, it's a great opportunity if you're not familiar with Deep Fried Breaks, uh, winning that and getting in on, on one of their breaks and seeing how the good guys do it. Uh, it you know, today's uh, good luck. Hopefully it's your name uh, being called later on uh, in the program. We're going to announce that. Uh, as well so look look forward to that we've got some great questions uh on hand today for our open wide segment for those that don't know our open wide segment is where i ask you the listener uh to ask me something uh you can submit your question and through any of our social media outlets for via direct message i i know i did i got a couple this week from instagram story you know you can put the questions poll up there and i got a few responses that way so uh, those questions are going to make it on the show and i'm going to tell you who asked them i'm going to answer them and and 
uh, some good ones uh, from that. But the open wide segment is something we we plan on doing every week. So if you want to hear your name or handle uh, said on the air, and we'll ask your question, and I'll, I'll answer your question as well. Keep it clean. It doesn't always have to be sports or sports card related. Uh, typically, that's what we talk about, but uh, it doesn't mean we have everything has to be on those two topics alone. So if you're curious or you want to know something personal, like I said, as long as it's, it's you don't get vulgar and, and rude, well, ask away and I'll put your question uh, on the air. Also, if you want to hear your voice on the air, you can go to the Anchor FM app and ask your question via the voice message feature that's only on the Anchor FM platform. So if you listen to us on Anchor FM or if you just want to head over there and submit a voice message to the show, I'll play your voice, your question, and obviously respond to it and answer it as well. I think it's a great segment. It's a great way to keep this uh, show interactive. Uh, I know there's you know one or two other shows that kind of do something like that, but most don't. And, you know, one of the goals is of, of this program is to be one of the most interactive sports card podcasts. And, and that's our way of, of going about it. So we hope you, we, we hope you participate. And uh, we, we love when you ask us questions. So without uh, any further delay. And here we go. We love our listeners. Without you, there is no us. We care about your opinions and feedback and invite you to reach out to us on any of our social media accounts. On Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast. Twitter at Sports Card N-A-T-I-1. Or email the show at SportsCardNationPC at gmail.com. We don't ask for much, but if you really like the show, give us a shout out. Tell your friends or give us a follow on our social medias. If you enjoy the show, please give us a positive review on iTunes or any of the platforms you are listening on. Thank you. Deep fried brakes. Active brakes all the time. Gearing up for a huge month of June with great new releases. As friendly and knowledgeable about the product as there is in the business. Super fast shipping too. Go check them out and tell them that I sent you and Blake will be glad to give you a promo code off your first break. Check out Deep Fried Breaks. DeepFriedBreaks.com Alright, it's time for What's Crackin'. All right, let's get to hobby news. Let's uh, go right to the release calendar. Topps Museum uh, 2019 Baseball is out uh, already. Uh, haven't seen any open as of yet. But uh, traditionally, you know, three to four hits per box. Uh, like a lot of mid to high-end products, some nice stuff comes out of it. It's sort of always been kind of a... A hit or miss product for me. I've seen some really dud boxes, and then uh, some really nice stuff and, and bigger hits come out of it. But you know, I don't know how this year's is going to pan out. But it seems like one of the products that in, in past years there's obviously a, a lot more dud boxes than than good boxes. I, I know traditionally, you know, every box obviously can't be a home run. But it seems like whenever I've either opened museum or watched cases or boxes being open there's some really um some really runs where you're kind of scratching your head being man i'm glad i didn't buy a case and and open that and and get and that would have been it so we'll see how this year's fares it's usually a product i buy the singles that i like or you know to be honest with you i want to turn around and, and flip if if they're going too low uh, I'll, I'll grab a few like that and, and you know, uh, I might PC one or two and then sell the rest. Uh, every once in a while, I'll open a box. Uh, uh, haven't been real fortunate doing that, so I, I usually stick to buying the singles. 
But uh, let's talk about uh, what's remaining on the June uh, release calendar. Uh, on the 26th, a lot of products are coming out that day. These are all on that day. We have 2019 Top Stadium Club Baseball. 2018-19 Panini Opulence Basketball. 2019 Donruss WNBA Basketball. 2019 Panini Elite Football. 2018-19 Upper Deck Premier Hockey. 2018-19 Panini Immaculate Collection Soccer. And 2019 Upper Deck Goodwin Champions. And on the 28th, uh, two products, 2018-19 Panini Chronicles Basketball and 2019 Leaf Valiant Football. So that closes out June's hobby release uh, calendar. Uh, so we got a good double-digit uh, products to, to continue to come out. Um, so uh, some choices to be made on what breaks you're buying into or what products uh, to rip open. Uh, Panini Noor is out for basketball, and it's getting rave reviews in, in terms of design. And it's it's not recently out. Well, it is recently out, but it's not brand new. Uh, leather and Lumber uh, Panini, uh, you know, based on some of the old Leather and Lumber uh, releases of, of yesteryear, uh, is getting sort of, you know, some bland reviews, car design uh, people aren't impressed with it, collation and, and some of the player choices and, and inserts and, and whatnot. I have bought, I haven't opened any of it. Uh, I've, if you've noticed, I say I haven't opened a lot of stuff. One of my goals of 2019 was, frankly, to open less wax. Not that it's not fun and, and I do enjoy it and I still do open stuff, um, but I've cut down my wax consumption. Uh, I buy more singles, and I've, I've just fared better. Uh, I had a personal credit card that I owed a lot of money on, let's just say, and uh, I recently just paid that off in full, and I attribute being able to do that uh, in seven months or six months uh, based on cutting down on my wax consumption. I, I know in prior years I just opened way too many products and was not getting the ROI on, on everything I opened. And I just, you know, had to sit down and say as much fun as it is to open, I'm better off buying, you know, opening less, not none, but less and buying things that I really want to obtain or to stock, uh, on my business side of things. So, um, that plan that I, I started on January 1st, has been very fruitful as i've said i've i've knocked down a double digit a double uh double digit thousand credit card debt and i've, I've completely uh made that uh, to zil to zilch and i, I don't want to claim to be a financial expert i just think it was uh, a business tactic that that was successful that worked and and it's just to to cut down on wax consumption. I, I know a few other acquaintances of mine are, are doing the same thing and and they're saying that, you know they're having similar results. They're they're not really regretting it. You know, my big fear in doing that was to maybe kind of miss that or miss opening as, as much as I used to and I gotta be honest uh, I, I guess maybe because of, of the, the positive results of it I don't miss it maybe if you know there wasn't as positive a result if I wasn't selling the singles I was uh, or, or am and, and getting that debt uh, balanced out to zero I might be singing a different tune but uh, uh, being disciplined's paid off, um, you know, uh, and it's, you know, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Speaking of thousands of thousands of dollars, uh, actually millions, let's go into the millions category. A Babe Ruth 1928 to 1930 game used road uniform uh, sold for a record memorabilia all-time high of 5.64 million dollars through hunt auctions 
uh, buyer hasn't been identified or if they have I I haven't heard who who it is I, I, you know uh, I don't think that really matters that's their personal bill uh, uh, business but it does set an all-time high for most uh, highest amount uh, brought for a memorabilia item at 5.64 million um, and in reading some of the notes pertaining to the sale the thing that struck me and, and it's not that I didn't, I didn't know this before but you know we, we forget that these these vintage age players back in the in the day they wore like the same uniform for two to three years um, and and this was a road uniform that the the babe wore for basically three seasons and quite frankly that's why there are just not many uh, jerseys and vintage game worn jerseys from that era there's just a lot less of them you know today's players now literally wear a new jersey every night I mean it's like every game it gets you know given the tops panini it's cut up it's put on cards in the next game they're wearing a brand new jersey so there's really you know obviously in today's day and age there's no shortages of jerseys there's going to be plenty when when today's players are are said and done but back in though that you know pre-war era those guys just wore jerseys for years and that's why there's just a lot less on the market and when you think you know, of all the Babe Ruth uh, game use cards that uh, I know I've seen, not that there's a ton, but they're, they're you know, they're out there. Um, it's, a, you know, I think to have an intact uh, game use Babe Ruth jersey, uh, that's why they're bringing $5.64 million. Um, there's not going to be anybody in the modern day that would even uh, uh, broach that whatsoever. Even even someone of Mike Trout's ilk is not going to get anywhere near that air just because it's just too many. Going to be too many of those on the market, um, and and so it's really amazing when you think about it. Um, you know, nowadays players even after games they they jersey exchange. You know, they give each other jersey, so they're wearing a, a new jersey literally almost every game and and here's a, a jersey babe ruth wore the same one on the road for for three straight years uh, and so just you know when you put those two things side by side and in perspective it really really makes you see where the current market is when it comes to jersey and and mem, and mem cards um and you know the one thing nice about it uh, to the buyer who paid $5.64 million, it's probably a safe bet that that's not going to make it on any tops or Panini products as, as cut-up swatches. So it's nice to know that there, there's a piece of history that is going to be preserved. And I know there's people that really are appalled when there's a jersey, Babe Ruth jersey, Ted Williams, Jackie Robinson, and they're made into mem cards i know there's there's people that are really really uh you know fired up about it and that we're we're destroying history um i fall somewhere in the middle of that i I'm, i i don't applaud that they make them and i'm not on the other side where i think it's a a, a tragic event i, I kind of fall in the middle but at the same time i don't want to see every Babe Ruth jersey that is known to existence be cut up and made into into memorabilia cards. And here it looks like there's going to be one more jersey that's not going to get cut up. And and to me that's that's a that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. So uh, let's talk about series two tops is out. Uh, there's a no numbered Vlad Guerrero Jr. in it. That's a uh, it's definitely not a super short print. We'll just call it a, a short print. And and frankly, there's quite a bit of them on eBay. I think when I checked earlier today, there was four or 500 that have been sold. And they're on, honestly coming out four or five to a case. So while they're not, you know, coming out left and right, they're not what we would call rare uh, either. So I think some of the highest prices of them are probably going to be realized or have been realized already and slowly but surely i'm sure uh what these these auctions or buy it nows are bringing 
are going to slowly uh, come down. Still a nice card, no numbered. Uh, you know, still uh, a short print, if you will. Uh, you know, we can argue how short it is, but it is, you know, shorter than your your average base card. It is a superstar in the making in Vlad Guerrero Jr. It's also a rookie designated card. So all that factors into uh, a high demand uh, for that card right now. But I think slowly but surely that card, like a lot of cards do, will kind of f- fill and, and settle down into what, uh, they're going to really be uh, bringing. Um, Tops, to me, has jumped the shark uh, when it comes to the living set product. I still love the baseball uh, living set. I still buy them. I know sales of that have have trickled down a little bit, although the last few weeks it looks like Tops. I don't know if it's deliberate. Uh, deliberate. I don't know how far in advance they make their, their release schedule, but you you know, you had Griffey uh, this week, and now you got Mike Trout, uh, his first appearance on a living set card. So both of those guys should sell fairly well and give a little uptick and a little, a little bit of lifeblood into the product. But I, I noticed Topps is doing, uh, I, I told you on a previous show, they're doing a, a soccer living set. Uh, from the Euro, you know, heavy European uh, appeal there. I understand that soccer is, is to overseas is very much like baseball and, and basketball, and football to us. So that didn't bother me too much. But now they are making a Star Wars living set product, and and this one, I'm a Star Wars guy. I may not buy the cards. Well, I'm definitely not going to buy the living set cards. And even I collected the cards, the original Star Wars cards when I was uh, a kid, which was a long time ago. Um, I do like the original movies more than the the uh, modern uh, versions. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think, uh, we, do we really need a Star Wars living set? You know, I understand they're, they're going to be Star Wars movie cards and Topps has those licenses and licensing but a living set series where three new characters each week as we know with the baseball and the soccer you know what's next a living set garbage pail kids um you know who knows uh what's next you know living set rocky horror picture show i just think you know they're, they're just they take something good and then they just they they overkill it and I know while it's a different product, you know, Star Wars and the baseball are op- obviously separate entities. I do they I do think it does reflect on the brand and the concept. So I I don't think the Star Wars living set. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to do or not do, but I definitely think it really it, it kind of sours me on the whole living set thing that they're just they're just overdoing too much. It's like they're looking for the next thing. To do a living set uh, on, and and um, you know, I, I I was hoping that wasn't going to be the case, but it is what it is. We'll see what others think, because really it comes down to money. If people keep buying the baseball living set, or people don't buy the Star Wars living set, then it'll probably go defunct. And and you know, I hope that definitely doesn't happen on on the baseball end of things, but. It'll, it'll be telling to kind of keep an eye uh, on some of these sales numbers and, and all three of these living set uh, niches, you know, baseball, soccer, and now Star Wars and see where those sales are over the next few months and what, what, the, you know, what the future may hold for all three of those lines. Uh, let's talk about the National. I know I've, I've gotten some people inquiring to whether myself and... and repping uh, the podcast would be there i'm still ev- I'll, I'll use the word efforting i know uh, i won't be able to get there monday through thursday well the show starts on wednesday but uh, i won't be able to get there the earliest if i even get there will be uh friday uh and i'm, I'm trying to get there friday to be there friday saturday and the early part of sunday before heading back here to the New York area to to go back to work. Um, 
but I, I don't know if it's going to happen. It's, you know, air, you know, looking at airfare and it's only for a few days and then the logistics of it and, and kind of scrambling to get promotional materials. Because if I go, I want to hand out stuff to, to you guys, whether it be T-shirts or trinkets of, of some kind, keychains or, or what have you. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if I do wind up booking and making arrangements, I'm really going to have to scramble to get stuff uh, printed up. So I think it's it's a safer bet. Well, I, I can tell you right now, I'm definitely going to be at the Atlantic City National for at least uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the plan. And if things actually work out and I can take that week off uh, from work, I, I'd like to go there the whole week and be there the whole week. So that's a definite. Chicago is probably 40, 60, me being there. But if you listened to last week's podcast, you heard the announcement that the 11-year-old uh, wonder kid, Brody, uh, who does his own blog and video blogs, he's going to be the show official correspondent from the convention center floor. We'll be, I'll be interviewing him a little bit each day. We'll put them all together in one big uh, piece for that week's podcast. We'll probably go a little bit longer that week, being it's National Week. Um, maybe we'll, maybe that'll be a week where we release the show on a Sunday or even a Monday, uh, to get all that stuff in there as a a general synopsis of the show. Uh, Brody was gracious enough to agree to do it. The national is literally in his backyard. He's a Chicago native. And so when I was thinking of, of when I, I probably wasn't going to be able to make this thing, I was thinking of someone that can do kind of a daily check-in with the show and Brody really was the first one uh, that came to mind it's like I said it's right in his backyard Um, it's his hometown and I can't think of a better representative you know if you've heard Brody or you know Brody and you know my stance on, on kids in the hobby I think they're the future of this game of this industry and I think if if we have kids like Brody or even half like Brody, we're, we're going to be all right. So I think he's going to be a great representative. We're going to have some fun uh, with those interviews, I'm sure. Uh, we like to have a little fun. I like to uh, push Brody's buttons and vice versa. So uh, that should be fun. I'm, like Again, I'm not ruling it out, but if you see me or, or me representing the show, it's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, best case scenario. And I put the odds of that at 4060 and I put the odds God willing uh that I'm here next year uh at AC at 100% um at least for Friday Saturday and Sunday if if not more so uh you know to those going uh you know as always they're, they're usually a great time it's the Super Bowl of the industry as I like to call it and um you know I'm hoping I'm hoping to see you there this year and worst case I'll see you there next year all right my next guest here on the sports card nation podcast uh, a very talented individual if you've been in the hobby for whether it's a year two years or or longer uh, you probably know of his work or seen his work maybe you've seen his work and not known his name but uh you know, he's he's uh, been gracious enough to give us a little time. I'm really excited uh, to have him. He hails uh, from St. Louis, home of your Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues. First time uh, for that. But uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome um, uh, Ken Carr. Welcome. Thanks, John. I'm happy to be a part of your podcast. And before we get started, let's go Blues. <laughs> yeah, how about that? I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, I was rooting for him. I'm a Ranger fan. So it's been it's been a, a, a dry couple years. We're rebuilding, um, but uh, you know, not having a rooting interest between the Blues and the Bruins, uh, I was rooting for the Blues just for the fact they've never won it before. Obviously, Boston has, and it's always nice. I don't know if I'd call them an underdog. I, I think both teams were, were you know record wise were pretty even, and and but you always root for a team that maybe's never. Uh, hoisted that that championship before, uh, and then say with St. Louis, that was you know something they had never done. And it, you know this is better than I do. It's a great sports town, 
And uh, so I was, I was rooting. I was a blue temporary Blues fan during the uh, Stanley Cup final. So I'm happy for you and and all of St. Louis. They got their their first cup. Yeah, I I gotta be honest with you. Uh, I never thought I would see it. And you mentioned a dry spell as a Rangers. <laughs> 52 years is a dry spell, my man. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, I didn't realize they, they've they been around, you know, that long. I, I always that, You haven't because we're never in it. <laughs> yeah. But, you, I mean, that, that you know, and that's that's the great thing about sports is, you know, you, you never know. I mean, I did a, a Stanley Cup preview show, and I had my friend Andy Pratt, who, who hails from uh, – Canada and he's a hockey guy and we both made our picks and and with all due respect to the Blues and the Bruins neither one of them were our representatives from each conference and a matter of fact we I did terrible the the teams I picked were both first round uh, uh well one was the first round sweep with Tampa Bay who had the best record in the regular season they almost set a a record for points and they got swept. So, you know, that's the beauty of sports. You, you just, any given day, you just never know uh, what could happen. And uh, so it was fun to watch. I love hockey. Um, so it was fun to watch and, and to see a, a team that's never done it before. And the whole, you know, with Layla and, and all the, the whole backstory and, and plot line. It was just great. I, I can imagine St. Louis has got to be buzzing right now. Yeah, it's it's out of control. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but the parade there. There might have been seven hundred fifty thousand people down there. And yeah, our city's not not that big. It was crazy. Yeah, and and crazy. I think I think we both agree. It's it's probably more of a baseball city, but whenever your team wins a, a championship and and in a sport they've never done it before, I think you know everyone comes out to to embrace that. You don't know when it's going to happen again. You know, quite frankly. So yeah, I know that's not what the podcast is about, but. That's one of the misnomers in St. Louis. No one is a baseball city, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a great sports Sport. town. It's just un, it's unfortunate that we're only known for baseball because that's that's not you know that's a misnomer, if you will. But, yeah, you know, that's either here or there. Well, I, I agree. I think it's a great sports town. I think it's. I guess maybe I worded it wrong. I guess it's it's known more for the baseball oh, history just for, because for sure of of for the sure. cards, you know, for sure. uh, legacy. For sure. But uh, well, maybe now with the blues and 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 that sort of thing, uh, you know, um, you know, it, it'll be more than uh, you know just baseball. Whole, you know, well, it is now with them hoisting the cup and uh, and and that sort of thing. It was fun to watch, that's for sure. So yeah, well, boss, another twenty-five years of futility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping next year it's the Rangers' turn though. <laughs> it's gotta be their turn soon. Yeah, they're rebuilding. They 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 made a they actually made a trade today and got uh, Truba, the defenseman from Winnipeg. They have the number two pick, and you know when you see a team uh, like the Blues go from what position they were the year before to to be a yeah. Stanley Cup champ, it it gives you hope for whoever your team is that hey, you know we we've been down, but we we don't have to be out all, all the time. So absolutely, absolutely. So you know, I, anyone that's seen your 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 artwork can it, it's I, I mean it's impeccable, it's incredible. The detail on it, the even the the scene, the emotion on on, on who you're featuring, whether it be you know and 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 put it out there. You do from uh, you know youth athletes up to obviously the the pro guys we we all know and and, and watch on TV, and whether it's a uh, a younger person in your artwork or a, a pro athlete you you do a great job of bringing that emotion out and and i mean to me the detail on it is you know whether it's a like a youth athlete or a pro athlete it's just incredible work and and you know it's 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 awesome i mean what when did you know i mean we all draw and dabble and doodle when we're younger you know, uh, my dad was an artist. I skipped me. That gene skipped me. Went to my son, who was actually pretty good. When did you know, like, you know, hey, uh, you know, I got something here? Um, for me, it was probably in high school, you know, middle of high school, because by then I realized I wasn't going to be a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. So so then, I, you know, I, I still like sports, collected baseball cards at that time, and, you know, I... I, I drew a lot in classes when I should have been doing other things in classes. 
And, you know, I kind of tell her, hey, you know, I, I might be a little better at this than the average guy. I still think, more importantly, I just did it more than the average guy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, I didn't really have a direction of what I wanted to do as a profession, so my parents kind of supported it. They they thought I was pretty good at it, and, you know, he kind of moved on from there. Yeah. So, well, like I said, incredible stuff. And, and anyone listening, you know, if you haven't seen it, uh, you probably have seen it. You did probably maybe you didn't even realize it. Um, but if you have, you know exactly what I'm, I'm talking about uh, as well. Is there is there a sport that gives you? Obviously, you do everything really well. So maybe this is kind of a weird. Is there a sport that gives you the most trouble? Like when you when you do uh, someone or or not not in particular. Uh, actually, there is. Um, now I haven't done a lot of hockey guys yet. I love hockey. But there's just not as much demand for it so far. Yeah, I'm getting ready to do a, a Heinrich Lundqvist, so we'll find out how yeah. difficult that's going to be. Um, but the football gives me the most trouble, just because of the cages on the yeah. helmets and all the straps and yeah. the NFL logos and the number. I mean, they're just loaded with little uh, minute details that yeah. take a long time to draw. And if they're not drawn properly, Everyone knows what they're supposed to look like. They stand out pretty easily if it's not done right. So that the football players by far take the longest or the toughest challenge. Yeah, that that makes sense. I, if I had to venture a guess, I probably uh, would have been my guess. So that that obviously uh, make, makes sense. Do you remember the first uh, athlete, professional athlete you 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 drew? Um, let me think here. Put you on the spot. Uh, well. Now, I started out drawing bigger drawings. Yeah. So, believe it or not, the first big drawing I drew was Michael Jordan, which I'm 49 years old, yeah. so I'd be in the right time frame for that. That wouldn't surprise anybody from that era. Yeah. Um, and then I drew, I'm from Missouri, so I drew a lot of college guys, Missouri Tigers that were playing at the time, back when they were still relevant. Yeah. I drew a lot of those. The very first catch card I ever drew was of Stan Musial. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you're, you're. I know you're big. You know, obviously St. Louis guys. And I, I heard you on uh, the Fat Packs podcast there, and you, you mentioned, you know, you, you're obviously partial uh, to uh, St. Louis athletes. I mean, that's that's to be expected. And I know you're a mutual guy. And, and speaking of mutual, one of your pieces uh, I just saw online. You you posted one of them, uh, made it into a commercial. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was that was pretty neat, actually. You know, you start out doodling on notebook paper and drawing your favorite athletes. You know, you never think it'll lead to a career or definitely not being on TV, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one day, you're watching a ball game and, whoa, <laughs> that, that's my drawing on there, you know. Yeah, that's, um, that's crazy. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty neat experience, for sure. Yeah, and it's funny that, that even you relate in that story – um, a couple episodes back, I had Nick Wasica. He's from Minnesota. He's, he's a sports photographer. And, uh-huh. and he relayed the first time he saw one of the photos he took making onto a, a, a sports car. And he had no oh, idea. God. He literally was just looking online, and it was a Tops Now card. Uh, and if my memory serves me correct, it was Jose Barrios from the Twins. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, and he said he was just looking. I think he might even said it was eBay, and he saw a, a Tops Now a Barrios, and he's like, that's my shot on that card. <laughs> you know. That's cool. Yeah, and that's he, pretty he, cool. He, and he, was, he explained that with Tops, they don't really, you know, he, he just submits his, his photos, and uh-huh. he's not sure what, if they're going to use anything. Upper Deck kind of gives him a heads up we're using this this, so he he kind of knows in advance with upper deck but he says with tops he finds out like we we would by by either opening the pack or just seeing a photo of the card online somewhere and he says you know hey that's my shot so the the first time he ever realized one of his picks made it on the uh, professional cardboard was you know i think he said on ebay and so it's you know when you related that your 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 mutual piece making it kind of onto a commercial. Did you know that, or were you kind of like, oh, that's me, that's well, my? St-. I did know. Um, I have a representative who represents me. Yeah, he's uh, he also represents the Mutual Foundation, the Mutual Family, and they had reached out to me through him, mm-hmm. seeing some of my mutual pieces, 
and asked me, you know, to if they could have the rights, you know, purchase the rights to it. So I knew, yeah, I knew at some point that I would see it out and about. But uh, you know, it was still a shock to see it on TV. I didn't know I would see it there. Yeah, I mean, even to see it, like even though you know it's coming, the, the, when you actually see it, that 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 adrenaline, that feeling, you know, oh, yeah. it's, I would equate it to like you know a musician or a band. They know their song's going to be on the radio. And then when they hear it for the first time, you know, it's still a pretty cool moment. Just yeah, that's it's pretty cool. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So what, what do you, I, I, I know uh, I, I commissioned you to, to do a, a piece for the show with, with me in it. Mm-hmm. I'm an ugly guy, so God bless you. I, I think you're going to have to work the, the most magic you've, you've ever had to do uh, <laughs> pr- pr- uh, previously. You know, I'm really going to put you to the test. But I'm, ex- you know... Like I said, what you do is just amazing, and and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And and what else you got? Uh, you know, I, I know you're pretty busy, but any anything major coming up? I know the nationals coming up. I'm assuming you're you're going to be there. I I actually will not be at the no. national. No. Okay. Um, I have an artist friend who's gone a couple years. He thinks that that's something I should get to, and if, and but. To be honest with you, I still got young kids in sports. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I just don't have free weekends. And not to mention, you know, I just started doing this full time at the first of the year. And it's just blowing up on me. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm as you know, <laughs> I'm overbooked. Yeah. And, which is good for me. I'm not uh, complaining, you know. Yeah. I, I definitely don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I'm not. I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm blessed. But, but I, you know, I don't have a lot of free time to do other stuff. And it's, it's all kind of overwhelming. I, I, you know, like anything else in life, I'm sure you experienced this early on with your podcast. You think you have it figured out. You think you have a workable plan. But when you start doing it, oh, yeah. the plan changes. And it wasn't what you anticipated. And yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. And I'm still feeling my way through things. So Yeah, um, yeah. No, understandable. Even with me, with the National, I, I know uh, a few people with the show kind of doing really well. Are you going to be mm-hmm. there? Right now, it's a fifty. Even with me, it's a fifty-fifty proposition. Uh, Ken, if I get there, I know I with my my, my real job, if you will, uh, I'm not going to be able to get there uh, at the earliest till Friday. So what I'm trying to do is, is, you know, get there maybe Friday through Sunday and head back Sunday. But I'll be honest with you, being in 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 New York here in the Syracuse area, next year's Atlantic City. It, it logistically that would make more sense uh yeah, for me yeah. you know i i do actually have some family in philadelphia as well so that that even helps even further so definitely next year um with a 50 50 chance at like a weekend uh appearance so I, i'm not you know i didn't promise anyone i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do my darndest but you know i, I, I like i told anyone don't don't bet on it because I don't want to disappoint anyone. But you know, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try next year for sure. Just with, with it being in Atlantic City and, and and being here in Syracuse and having family in in Philly, it just that 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 definitely works out a lot better. Um, you know what I love to do. You know, if the show continues to do well and it's something we we keep doing is is you know, at least come in for a weekend at each national, depending obviously on where it yeah. is and logistics. And, and like you said, you know, you, you have kids in sports and, you know, and I've heard you say this before, you know, vacations kind of go, vacations are the tournaments, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, and I, I have a 19 year old that's about to start his, his college football career. I, I have one, I only have one kid and I can attest to every everything you said because he played baseball he played football and you know i had to look at my phone each week just to know where i was going to be each night you know we're going to be we're going to be in this city and this weekend we're going to be in this travel tournament and and that's with one kid so uh it's it, it you hit it right on the head vacations become tournaments or you're in this town for this re this reason so yes. Yeah, I think most of your collectors know this and, and experienced it. We wouldn't trade it for the world, but it uh, it is definitely time consuming. So yeah, yeah, and it, 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 like you said, it, it, you know, you you, you love it, and you, you you know, obviously, your kids and all those moments are 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 great. And you know, now even with my son going away to college, and you know, he's an only child, and uh, you know, my wife joked with me, you know, like, are we actually going to take a vacation? Uh, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know what to do. You know, like, where do we, you know, where do you want to go? It's It's been so long for, for the real one. I don't even know, you know. I, I, one place I'd love to go is New Orleans. I've never been there. And I, I, you know, I don't know. I've always wanted to go there. And I love Cajun food and the whole, that kind of atmosphere. So I mentioned that. Believe it or not, I've never been to Boston, even though we're not super far from it. So that's another thing. But, you know, also, my son's going to be playing. So Saturdays or Sundays, yeah. we're, we're, you know, the, the school he's going to is only about an hour and 20 minutes away. So it's not. Oh, good for you. You still yeah. have to see it then. Yeah, so it's not far. But, I, you know, again, Saturdays and Sundays will probably be you know, booked up to whether he's got a home or away game and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, you know, you know the drill even probably more so than, than, than I even do, but you, you know, you love it and, 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 and all that. And I, I know you've, you've done, you know, uh, pictures of your own children uh, playing sports and, and other people's as well. How, how do you compare that to doing like, do you feel almost a little bit more pressure because, you know, mom and dad are, are going to see it rather than, you know. Well, a, a... well for yeah, for me, um, they're the they're my favorite things to do. Yeah. Um, because I know that you know, like the the one of one cards, I love. They're fun to do. I get to draw so many. Uh, I love sports. I get to draw all my favorite athletes. It's great. I get them. I get. I can turn them around pretty quickly. But the amateur athletes I draw are special because those are slices of life. I, I think they're priceless personally. Yep. I mean, like your son. Yeah. You've had him for 19 years. When four more years, three or four more years, he's going to be out of your house for good. Yeah. It's the football days will be over. Yeah. You'll have your memories. You'll have a new family. But every time you walk by the hall and see that drawing of your child on the wall, you'll yep. rush back 15 years to their youth. You'll remember all the good times. As you know, we forget the bad times. We only remember the good. Yeah. Remember all the good times. And, and like I tell people, you'll redo your house. You'll redecorate. You'll move. <laughs> you'll move those things. But the first thing always when we get home is that piece of art. And yeah. For me, that's about as priceless of a gift as I can give anyone. Is that? Um, yeah. No, you're 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 right. But that but that you're right. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, Ken. You know, you said that my son Jordan hasn't started. You know, he's committed. He hasn't started, but. You know, it's probably something I'm going to have you, you know, give you a heads up, put me, put me on the list. I know you said you're real busy. Maybe I could book two or three years ahead of time, but I'm sure I'll have you do something with him, you know, playing college football. That's something, you know, well, a just, lot of people think, don't get to do. And and, well, and just think about it. You, I don't know about you. I'm sure you're the same. I'm sure every parent listening to this is the same. Your favorite thing to do is watch your kids oh, play yeah. sports. Yep. Whether you wait, it's not. It's not. You're trying to live vicariously through them. It's just your favorite thing to do. Yeah. You'll pass up a Super Bowl game. You'll pass up a Stanley Cup game if your kid's playing that day. You're like, man, I can't. I gotta see if Johnny makes ten tackles in that game. You know, yeah. I. You know, I, I. What if he? What if he get? What if he picks off in the reception or throws a touchdown? I miss it. You know, you, you can't. Yeah. Again, it's the most priceless thing I do. Um, no, so, I. Yes, I agree with you. And like you said, you you. You know, that, that gift you get, you know, it's the talent you have and that gift will, will, will always pay. I mean, that's something yeah. that family, that person, and it'll be passed down. You know what I mean? It's never yeah. going to get, it's never going to get thrown out. You know, it's like baseball cards. You always hear the story, you know, oh, my mom, when I went to college, she, yeah. she threw yeah. out my collection. I, I had this, I had that, but it's all gone. You know, your artwork's not going to be in that category because it's it's always someone's going to always have it. It's it's going. It just, it, it's it just gonna, gets better with age as time goes on. Yeah, and and you know it's going to be passed from one person uh, to the next. You know, so put me down. I'll, I'll have you do. You know, I'll probably have you do a couple because one for me, and maybe uh, if I'm a nice dad, I, I'll I'll get him one for his for himself as <laughs> as well. So. You bet, you bet. Yeah, but uh, so, like you said, you, 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 you're you busy. Um, how? I mean, I don't know if you want to, how booked out are, are you really, just for those that are, you know, thinking about, you know, contacting you? Well, luckily for me, I'm booked through the end of July as of now. Yeah. Um, which, again, 
I feel bad for my customers. I I do tell everyone that up front because I, I I like to be transparent. I don't yeah. want anyone thinking they're going to get it tomorrow. As you know, I'm. I think you know I'm very. I communicate pretty easily. Yeah. I talk. Yeah. To people ask a question. I let them know because I don't want them fretting and worrying about it. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yes, but I'm booked through July right now. I, I you know somebody has something that has to be done before then. They can always contact me and I and I can see what I if I can work them in. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, I'm blessed to be that fortunate to have it, to have that, and you know, um, it just they take me a certain amount of time, and every time I get faster, I put more details into them. So yeah. I, I don't know if I really help myself. <laughs> well, you, you're. I, I don't want to speak for you. I, I, you know, being a son of an artist, you, you know, you take pride in everything you do. You're meticulous yes. and and. And, you, you know, each, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but I think you'll agree, you know, each one of these things is, is like your baby as you're doing them. And you, oh, for sure. I, I, I'm glad you can appreciate that. Yeah. Well, my, like, the, you know, like, know the average, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say just with my dad being an artist, you know, it's funny when I was younger and, and I lived with him and, and, you know, it'd be two in the morning, two thirty in the morning. I'd come down and either get a drink or go to use the restroom and there he is on his, his art table, you know, painting and drawing. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? It's 2.30, you know? I was like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing, man. I, I had the itch, you know? So he, I remember him even even when I was younger, you know, just at all times in the morning, just he'd get up and just, I want to do this or I have an idea. If I don't do it, yeah, you know, I remember him, he would tell me, if I don't do this right now, I'll probably forget about it. It won't happen. So while it's fresh on my mind, he He'd go down there, turn his you know his light on, and 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 get to to drawing something out or or painting it or whatever uh, you know was was on his mind at the moment. I I thought you know even though it was my dad, I, I thought just as, as a human, there's someone that like just is so meticulous and and cares so much about what he's doing. So I I I can imagine even for you, it's it's probably uh, similar. Well, again. I'm fortunate, and if someone thinks enough of me to add one of my art cards to their personal collection, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's an honor that somebody would think enough of my stuff to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and then on top of that, they are—they're like your own children. You—you've got a lot of time invested in it. You want to look the best you can, and and again, I want—I tell all my customers, I want all of them to love their art card. You know, yeah. that's why, as you know, I let them have a hand in picking out the photo I use. You know, yeah. I want them to love it. I want them to love it because, first of all, you know, one of the reasons people do art is to please other people. You know, you get a kick out of somebody telling you it looks good. I mean, yeah. I'd be lying if I didn't. Who doesn't do their job and want to be uh, applauded for it? Yeah, that's na- that's and, just human nature. And secondly, the business side says if I do a good one, they'll recommend <laughs> me to their friends and yep. they may want another one. You know, yep. and I would rather do this than go out and do a, do a hard a hard job, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love doing them. Um, and I, I, I literally, it sounds cheesy. I try to do my very best on every one because I want the customer to be happy. I want when mm-hmm. people see it to say, wow, that's great. You know, uh, you know, again, it's just in my best interest to do the best I can. Yeah. And like, you know, like you said, you take pride. Each one of these things is, is like, you, you know, your kids obviously have real kids, but yes, you know, this, this is, you know, a representation of what you do and, and you, you take pride in it. I, I think, you know, I think that's that's great, and and you know, there's probably some people who don't, you know, what where you do, and and I think it shows in in the final product, you know, uh, every, every I mean, I've looked at, I'm sure I've not seen everything, but I've seen a ton of what you've done, and it's just all. <laughs> It's just all in, in, incredible. And I, you know, this is coming, not that I'm a, an art expert or, or whatnot, but having a dad as an artist, you know, I've seen, uh-huh. I've seen, you know, great work and great pieces before. And, and everything I've seen you do, Ken, it's just, you know, every, just when I, you know, I said, man, that's incredible. And you come out with something else. I'm like, holy, holy smokes. You know. Yeah, well, I, I, I appreciate it. I, again, I try to, I try to, I literally try to do a better one each time, you know. Yeah, and, um, and and even with like you said, even with the the youth athletes and and you know the way even the the, the you you capture their emotion and and 
You know, I, I was looking at one tonight, uh, uh, you know, not to, to put one on the spot. Uh, all your stuff's incredible. But it was a, a young a young man, I guess it was his first Bills game. And, uh, yes, yeah, that and, was a great, yeah, that was a and great just, photo somebody gave me. And, you know, what drew me to that a little bit, because I do go to, being I'm not far from Buffalo, my buddy's a Bills season ticket holder. So I go, I wind up getting the two games a year because he buys an extra uh-huh. ticket, and every week he takes a, a different friend. So I wind up getting probably to, to at least two games. And so what I saw, I saw the Bills shirt, you know, jersey, and the young man, I'm like, what's that? And then I read what it was uh, pertaining to, and I just thought, man, that's that's something that that family, that young man, even when he's not a young man uh, anymore, can can look back on, you know, that first game, and and there's a, it's almost like a snapshot in time. Yeah, I, I, you know, I always tell like people, some cards, I, you know, you inevitably are gonna, you know, turn out better than others. You know, it's not from a lack of effort on all of them, but some that one turned out really well. I mean. I had great yeah. source material. That kid's expression on his face is priceless, as you know. I mean, that is yeah. just a dynamite image that Dad gave to me. He sent that to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I can draw that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, it makes what you do even more fun because that's really what it's really about, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, that's that, that's crazy. And and like I said, you do a great job of you know. It's one thing you can look at a photo. I mean, that's the that's the talent. Anyone can look at a photo, but to to convey that that emotion uh, in in the artwork itself, that's a whole nother show, you know. And and you do you do it, and it's uh, great. Again, I, it's much appreciated. Thank you. No, you you're welcome. I'm just I'm just being being honest. So. Um, so I, I, I know you said you, you're busy, but you do fit things in. So mm-hmm. Ken, again, I appreciate you, you, you coming on, giving us, a, a, you know, being busy, even to give us a little time on, on the show, uh, tonight. Um, I'm going to give you the, this, this time here to, to give out any of your, your, your websites, your, your, uh, you know, any handles on social media where people can get a hold of you. And, and if they want, you know, they want to, to commission you for a, a project, they, they can. And, and if, 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 even if they don't, just to see the incredible work you do for that matter. So, Awesome. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, on your show. Oh, it was you're my welcome. pleasure and it was my honor. I mean, six months ago, <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even know how big of a world the trading card, sports card industry was, man. It's just blown my mind. Yeah. Uh, all the people out there and all the great uh, reception I've received with my artwork. I mean, you know, my wife and I still sit down sometimes. I've had cards go to California, New York, yeah. all over the country. It's just, I know it may sound silly to people, but it's just mind boggling to me living in Missouri that that's possible, you know. So, yeah, well, the, you know, with, with social media, um, Ken, oh, I think the world is like a, you know, I, I, this is kind of goes without saying, but. You know, we're we're about the same age, and you know, I, I I'm sure you can relate to this. And I, I seen it on a meme. You know, when we were younger, you know, obviously we didn't have cell phones. We knew where all our we knew where all our buddies were, where all the bikes were in the who's ever front lawn. Right. We didn't have a cell phone. Hey, where are you? Or text, where are you? And 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 that sort of thing. And so now the world's a lot smaller of a place with social media. I mean, there's good and bad. That's a whole nother show to social media. But I think one of the, 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 the benefits and the bright spots of it is that now, you know, what you do can be shared uh, across the world, let alone yeah, in the United States. It's crazy. I, I mean, you know, you have a podcast that I'm yeah. sure that's heard worldwide. It's just unbelievable to me that yeah. it's like that. Well, it's, it's, it's crazy because on the platform I, I'm on with Anchor, I get a, de- a demographic. A demographics report, uh, usually every week or every other week, and I mean it tells me where what countries uh, we're getting listens in, and and the last one I got was seventeen different countries, and oh, and and at one of them's Afghanistan, and I don't know how they understand, <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's there's English, but you know, it just it's amazing how the hobby, whether it's art or 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 the cards itself, can can reach. That far, and, and like you said, you know, six months. I started the podcast seven months ago, and, and 
when I started it, can I really, I didn't put any expectations on it. I went in there uh-huh. open-minded. I didn't want to put like, hey, we got to have this many people listen. Because, you know, that sometimes that doesn't always work. You get discouraged and, and maybe, sure. you, maybe you hang it up too soon. So I kind of went in with just, I wanted, this is kind of what I want to do. I want it to be weekly. I want it to come out on the same day. I want it to be uh, focus more on positivity. I mean, we do have to talk about stuff that maybe is not always good. That just you got to kind of cover both sides of the coin. Um, but I wanted to bring people on, such as yourself, that are are, are doing a, a lot of good and positive things. And and I've had, if you look at the guest list, with, with, with yourself included, they're just some incredible, talented people doing uh, incredible. Uh, great things and 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 that's kind of what i wanted to do and here we are you know and i don't want to make this about me but here we are seven months later and you know where the 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 people listening and and the amount of people listening i get these these demographics and it's just it's crazy to think that in in that amount of time that could happen that fast and it like you said you know it gives you you know, you don't necessarily do it for the pat on the back, and but you also gives you some validation. Hey, you're doing you're doing all right. You're doing good. You know, good things, and people take an interest and in, and in, and in, in like what you're doing, and and that oh, that's a nice thing to get. You know, when you get it. Yeah, for sure, absolutely, it is. You know, so absolutely I, is. You know, when you said six months, and I I saw the parallel there. I. I you know, I, I kind of went off uh, on a little tangent there, but I, oh no! But uh, you can, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, and it, it, it happens. It happens quick, and 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 you know, it's you know, for you, I'm I'm sure it's even going to get uh, uh, bigger, better. You're going to get more busier, and 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 that's like you said, those are good problems to have, and 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 you know, I think you you you, you go about it the right way, like you said, you, you just communicate your time frame and you, you know, uh, and that way people know where they stand and, and you know what I mean? Do you get a lot of people, uh, Ken, not to put you on the spot, do you, get a, no. do you get a lot of people that, you know, every other day, Hey, is it done or where are you at? Can I see you? Oh, you know, no, I don't, but you know, as you know, I don't collect the money until I'm getting close to drawing. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the reasons I don't is for that reason, yeah. because it, uh, in, in fairness to people, if I gave someone a hundred dollars to do a card and it took them four or five weeks, I start to think the guy wasn't giving my money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know, for me, a hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. So I, I, I would be uncomfortable wondering what happened. So one, of the, I know I'm booked out. I, as you know, I tell people that when they when they place the order, and one of the reasons I don't accept payment until then yeah. is for that reason. Now, unfortunately, probably out of Every 10 customers I get, usually two or three out of every 10, because in the moment they would buy it, but then four weeks later, you know, life gets in the way. You know, yeah. like things change, they're not as hot on the product. That's one of the downfalls of how I do things, but I also save a lot of stress for myself and for my customers worrying about whether or not they can trust me or not. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, well, I think your approach is, is, is on the money. I think you're honest with people. Um, and even, like you said, if you get in a situation where life happens or that they, they then change their mind, they always remember that you're honest with them. And when, when the situation changes back again, they, they'll, they'll get a hold of you and say, hey, you know, yeah. I'm interested. And, and I always try to tell them, I got no hard feelings. I reach out every week to... 10 or 11 people and say, I'm ready to do your cars this week. Just please let me know if you're, if you're still a go, if you're not, no hard feelings. I mean, I don't want to lose the card, obviously, but I, again, I know life gets in the way. It gets in my way. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and you know, quite honestly, if I could draw them and complete them faster, it's a problem. Kind of my craft creates. Yeah. <laughs> so I just got to learn to deal with it. You know? Yeah. And, and you know, I think your work speaks for your, uh, itself and, and, I think people understand that uh, these things, you know, uh, Rome wasn't built this day, as they say. And, uh, you yeah. know, I think most people are reasonable and, and understand that there's a, a time frame and, and you got to, you know, I you got to be patient. I, have very, yeah, I will say I have very few people that complain too much. I've had very few. And I like to think that when they get it, they forget the time it took to yeah. get it and they, it's yeah. well worth the 
product that they, you know, I, I always believe, I like to believe that my product supersedes what they expect they were getting. That's what I like to believe anyway. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm based on what I, based on what I see, Ken, I, I think, uh, I think that's, that's very much the case. So, uh, so again, I, I want to thank you. You've been very generous, you know, coming on the show and, and, and giving some of that time. I, I, again, give out any, you know, where can people get a hold of you? Where can people see uh, the incredible work that you do? If they do want to order, you know, well, where can they, uh, you know, get in touch with you? Okay, I have a website, KenCarlSportsArt.com. And my name is Ken, K E N. Carl K A R L. Yeah. Ken Carl Sports Art dot com is my website. You can see pretty much every piece of art I've ever created on there. I also have Facebook. Most people are on Facebook today. I'm easiest to find on Facebook under Ken Carl Sports Art. Again, two Ks. Ken mm-hmm. Carl. Um, I'm on Instagram. That's a little harder to find, but I think if you'll just search Ken Carl, you'll find me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'm also on Twitter. At Ken Carl O one, I believe it is. Yep, I think so. so yep. Well, and I try to post, other than weekends because of my kids' sports. I try to post on all those sites daily, uh, so people can see my progress and also so my customers can see I'm actually working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. You know, that's uh, that's great. Again, Ken, I can't thank you enough for for coming on. I'd love to, you know. Have you back on again somewhere down the line, and if that would if, be great. That would yeah, be awesome. if you if you're doing anything and you and you want to promo it, uh, let me know. I, I'll definitely uh, you know uh, promote, highlight anything you're doing. It's uh, I think what you do is uh, incredible. You know, it, it, it's what you said too. It's it's one thing you know even to do professional athletes, but uh, I was really drawn in by even uh, the, you know the the youth athletes you've done and. and and on a personal level, like you said, that's something that's going to, you know, last for for out time. And, and you can take a lot of pride in that. And, and, and the work you do is, is something else. So incredible. Well, I will say this, John, before I let you go. Okay. I do have a what I consider a great project being released probably around October with another great sports artist that does cards. Yeah. I think it's a dynamite card collectible. I think the uh, collectors will love it. So when I get close to that, I'll reach out to you. Let yeah, you know. let me know. We'll have you on, and we'll, we'll definitely t- uh, talk about it and, and, and get the word out there for sure. All right. No thanks, doubt. Man, thanks for your time. I, I can't stress you enough how uh, grateful I am for having uh, you. The, you the, 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 the feeling the feelings mutual, and, and uh, again, thank you, Ken. Best of luck to your podcast. All right. Thank you. Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right, it's time for our wide open segment where we ask you, the listener, to ask us the questions and we answer them. And so we got good responses this week. Uh, I'm going to pick three questions. Uh, We had more than that, but I'm going to pick three that I think, uh, you know, are pertinent and three I like. That's our show, so we get to pick. Um, All three are from the Instagram uh, platform. And the first one is from NBA Dude. That's D O O D. And NBA Dude asked me with the recent Anthony Davis trade and Lonzo Ball going to New Orleans, will that help Lonzo Ball and his card values? And it's a it's a tough question to answer. I think. It may. I think the difference will be in New Orleans. He'll be, you know, uh, you know, teaming most likely with Zion Williamson. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure in in L.A. I think he'll have a little bit less pressure, so maybe he can be himself. I think he's a very good player. Um, so I see a lot of assists, a lot of passes in the Zion with, with buckets at, on the end of those. And so I see his assist numbers go up. I think the big thing, and I think we all know what I'm about to say, but I think the big thing with Lonzo is he, he's got to stay healthy. Um, if he can stay healthy, he's a very good point guard. Um, you know, he can be a better shooter. That'll come with time. You know, we forget he's still a very young ball player. So I think... 
you know, we'll probably get a little less exposure in New Orleans, but, you know, maybe not because with Zion there, there's going to be more media coverage, uh, more ESPN highlights. Uh, so I'm going to say, you know, not really less exposure. I think his assists go up. So, yeah, I think uh, if you uh, have some Lonzo Ball cards, I'd hang I'd hang tight. I think there might be an uptick, uptick in his career and an uptick in his card value. So excellent, excellent question. And uh, we'll, we'll see uh, if I'm right or wrong. So my next question comes from LJK Cards. Again, also from Instagram. Lane, I know him a little bit from a chat room we both belong to. Um, Lane's got quite a collection. But Lane's question's a good one. And I, I'll tell you why I picked it, uh, besides being good, uh, after I tell you what the question was. And Lane asks... Is Kyle Tucker going to make it in the bigs? And if so, will it have to be somewhere other than Houston? And I picked this question because I'm a big Kyle Tucker fan. I have quite a bit of his stuff that I've kind of socked away, quite a bit of autograph stuff and, and, you know, 100-something first Bowmans and first Bowman Chrome. So I'm sitting on quite a uh, Kyle, Kyle Tucker stash, if you will. Um so I'm hoping the answer is yes, he's going to, to make it big time. Um, he's had a couple cup of coffees in the big leagues. Both of those call-ups uh, were not very good and, and and not very productive, and he was sent uh, back down. Whenever he goes back down to the minors, he tears it up. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little concerned that he's going to be one of those great minor league players that may be the game doesn't translate on the next level, but I, I hope I'm wrong, I, and I think I may be wrong. He's got a great left-handed swing, uh, and I, again, another young player. Will the Astros have the patience with him, or you know, the thing that makes me a little bit nervous if you follow or like Carl Tucker is, you know, you recently saw, saw they called up Jordan Alvarez, doing very well right out the gate. And obviously he's a, a younger player. And if he produces, Kyle Tucker's luster starts to fade a little bit. So I, I think, Lane, you might be on to something. Kyle Tucker might make it, but he may need to do it wearing another uniform. And, and what do you get for Kyle Tucker? You know, probably a couple prospects, maybe uh, a major league bona fide starter. Um, if they wanted to do something like that. But the question is, will the Astros uh, trade him? I don't, I think it's too early for that. But with, with, you know, maybe a position change. He's an outfielder. Maybe he goes to first base or something like that uh, to maybe, uh, you know, fast track him to the big leagues. And then the next time he gets called up, and there will be a next time, he's definitely going to feel more pressure to produce because he's, He's not done it on previous calls up. So uh, I'm a Kyle Tucker guy. I, I hope he does make it. Uh, wherever that team, whatever team that may be on, I think the tools are there. The skills are there. He's just got to get it done on that next level. If I'm hedging my bets, I think you may be on to something. I think it happens, but it may need to happen in a different city other than Houston. So great question. Thank you, Lane. Our third question comes from Cards Upon Cards, also uh, an Instagrammer and I believe a Braves fan based on the question. He asked what all the young talent the Braves have, uh, Acuna, Albies, uh, Riley, Pache coming up through the ranks. Can they all hit? Can they all be superstars? And if not, which one's the safest bet? Well, I'm going to go with the no-brainer answer. It's not the exotic answer, but I, I think the safest bet is obviously Ronald Acuna Jr. I see a, a long-term, very productive, all-star type career, five-tool player. You know, Austin Riley's doing very well, but I don't know. Well, he is no way he's going to sustain that pace. Um, Albies is going to be a solid player, not very flashy. Um not to the level of Acuna, and then Christian Pache is, is is doing very well in the minor leagues. He's kind of got the mold 
of an Acuna type. His defense is stellar as well. So he's kind of the wild card. I think he's the one that could rival Acuna or come the closest. But I could also see where he doesn't live up to the billing uh, as well. So um, I'm going to go with the obvious choice, Ronald Acuna Jr. But let's let's be real. If you're a Braves fan, you got a lot of good problems to have with that kind of talent pipeline and those kind of young young superstars. So the Braves are going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, for a while, and I think the leader of that pack is going to be Ronald Lacuna Jr. Three great questions. I want to thank the, the Instagram group there where those questions came from um, for, for participating in Wide Open. And, and let me just say, in closing this segment, uh, we take these questions at any time. Like I've always said, you can send them to us via direct message, private message, public message. We'll read your, your, your handle on the air, your question. If you go to Anchor FM, you can leave us a voice question and we'll, we'll put your voice on the air and answer your question as well. Keep it clean. Uh, the questions uh, so far have all been pretty much either sports or hobby related. But if you want to go off topic as well, like I said, keep it clean, non vulgar, and we can answer uh, any questions you may have. I try to do two or three questions per week for this segment, and you can ask them at any time. And hopefully, I pick your question, read it on the air, and answer it as well. First, so thanks for everyone. There were some questions we we didn't pick this week. Unfortunately, I can only grab two or three that uh, I'm particularly fond of. But uh, keep those questions coming, and hopefully yours uh, makes it on the air, as they say. Thanks again. So thanks to our sponsor, Blake, from Deep Fried Breaks. Uh, Once again, we are offering another break credit, and this credit is for $20 to any deep fried break. Blake does a great job. I've seen recently uh, one of the big hits, Hank Aaron Auto, uh, came out of of a break product that they did. I believe it was a museum. Um, Don't quote me. But uh, Blake does a great job and he's been very, uh, we love having him part of the show as as a sponsor and he was a guest uh, a few episodes back and we'll have him on again. And uh, so this, this week's Break credit is for $20. We had uh, to enter. You needed to follow both of our accounts. Retweet a couple posts I posted during the week to to gain entry. Uh, I took that list. It was pretty extensive. So thank you for for everyone that followed and retweeted. Uh, I rolled dice to to randomize it. Uh, We got an 11 on that dice roll. And after rolling and randomizing that list 11 times... The winner of the $20 Deep Fried Breaks credit is 55 Lincecum. 55 Lincecum is our winner. Uh, After the show airs, I'll also send you uh, a tweet to to let you know you won. I'll tag Blake so he knows you're the winner and you guys can hook up and and get that uh, all squared away. So congratulations to 55 Lincecum. This week's winner of $20 break credit from Deep Fried Breaks. It's time for From the Box Seat. All right, let's talk about baseball first. Uh, I'm sure everyone has seen. Uh, the unfortunate news that David Ortiz was seriously wounded by gunshot. Uh, he is doing better. He's recovering in Boston and is expected to make a full recovery. That's good news. Um, they released the video uh, a few days ago and uh, show somebody kind of approaching him and shooting him in the back. You can kind of see him jump and then fall to the ground. Um, and now it's being reported there have been six arrests made, and now it's also being reported that the shooting was a case of mistaken identity, that the bullet 
were intended for his friend and not him, and the shooter mistakenly thought David Ortiz was the friend and not David Ortiz. So, I mean, it really doesn't matter. He was seriously wounded and, and, and whatnot, and whoever's doing the shooting should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But I think it's a lesson in... You know, be careful about early news reports because early news reports had, you know, him the target because he was cheating uh, with someone else's wife and those sort of things. You just, you, you don't know what's true and, and what now. Now it's coming to light that he wasn't even the intended uh, target uh, of this assassin's bullet. So, uh, thankfully, he's going to make a, looks like he's going to make a full recovery and you hope that the people who were behind the shooting, regardless of who the intended target was, uh, go to jail where they uh, deserve to be. And recent news, the, it's come out that the Tampa Bay Rays have seeked permission from Major League Baseball to consult with Montreal to maybe do a dual home uh, dual team, dual city team, you know, with some home games played in Tampa uh, Tampa Bay and other games played uh, in Montreal. They would both get new stadiums. And, and I got to be honest with you, at first when I heard this, I thought it was kind of neat. But now the more I think about it, it's kind of odd. And I mean, if you're going to move, move. And if you're going to stay, stay. And if they're both getting new stadiums, then pick what city you want this team to represent and 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 play there with a new stadium, you know. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, maybe it's because it's a tourist town, I don't know, but, you know, Tampa's never really been able to fill that stadium. And, you know, recently and even in the past, they've had some good teams and still can't get that done. So I don't know if baseball is ever going to really catch on in, in Tampa enough to to fill that stadium so maybe it's you know it's not that i want to kick out a team out of america and give it to another country but maybe it is time for that team to go to montreal who apparently is really missing their expos and and maybe give them another crack at at baseball and and you know i, I can tell you as someone who went to a few expos games when they were younger um the crowds were great uh, the people did get behind their team. So uh, I'd venture, I guess, the attendance would be better in Montreal, not just in the initial phase. I mean, obviously, anything new, people come out to see, but I think even long term. So it's something Major League Baseball has to look at, uh, but I don't really buy the whole Montreal slash Tampa Bay Rays uh, proposal that's being uh, talked about. So the NBA draft uh, is still ongoing as I'm recording this. Uh, a few a few surprises. Nasir Little uh, drops down the board. Uh, Zion was the obvious number one pick. And, and so uh, the Zion era begins. New Orleans is going to have a very good young team. They may, be, they, may, they may be better after trading AD than they were with him on it as now they are starting to get uh, pieces there and, and, and good young talent. So that'll be uh, interesting to see how they fare this year without AD, but with what I consider a better overall team. Uh, watching the draft early on here, the one thing that stood out to me is, you know, uh, some of these young men that were being drafted, uh, one of their, uh, some of them have lost one of their parents and some of the emotion that they showed, you know, on stage or during their interview or as they got drafted was was really genuine. Not that you wish anything bad, but it, w it was, you know, refreshing to see. And, you know, a lot of them have a lot of pride and they, they want to do it for their families. And it's it's to see that raw emotion and, and them care that much. Uh, uh, it's It's always nice to see. So I think... The NBA is headed in a, a, a good direction with some bright young men, good talent. 
uh, on its way after our already impressive 2018 rookie class. I think 2019 is going to be uh, pretty good as well. So uh, uh, nice to see. I, I don't always watch the NBA draft, uh, but I did tonight. So uh, obviously Anthony Davis is a Laker. The Lakers basically traded everybody but LeBron. So it's LeBron and Anthony Davis and whoever they get tonight in the draft. And I'm sure, obviously, they're going to sign or try to sign a few pieces to add uh, to that puzzle. So we'll see uh, where they all shake out after the offseason. Mike Conley is a new member of the Utah Jazz, and they gave up quite a bit of draft picks and, and you know, Mike Conley's an all-star and an all-star level player, but he's 31 years old. I thought that uh, Utah, while making a big splash move, did give up quite a bit for this this uh, player. Um, but again, they get paid to, to analyze all that stuff. Uh, I really don't, so, you know, I'll acquiesce to them. But they, they gave up quite a package and, and deal to, to get uh, Conley... Uh, over to the Jazz. I don't know if it bothers you as much as it bothers me, but I really find it kind of annoying, you know, uh, you watch the, the NBA draft and everyone pretty much knows that this player is being picked by that team, but they're already uh, been agreed to be traded and they won't be playing for that team. The player comes up sta on stage he gets a hat of the team he's actually not going to play for, takes a picture with, with Commissioner Silva, and, you know, I'm sure there's few people watching at home or maybe even in the Barclays Center in this in this year's drafts case that don't even realize that that player's not going to be on that team, that he's already been dealt. I, real, I know that why they don't announce it. they got to wait till the official offseason begins and all those um, collective bargaining agreements, but I really wish they would change that. If you know, you know, the Celtics are drafting such and such a player, but he's really going to the 76ers, just give him a 76ers hat and, and let him take a picture in, uh, with the hat of the team he's on and, and announce it to the crowd that the, the Celtics have traded this pick to the 76ers and the 76ers select. Uh, I think it's, you know, I know why they can't, but I wish they would change that so they could. I, I just think it's, uh, maybe it's a pet peeve of mine. Maybe it doesn't bother you, um, but it bothers me when the guy's wearing uh, a different hat than the team he's going to. Uh, they they announce that the one team drafted him without announcing that, that that's been traded to another team and, and, you know, in the NFL, they do that, you know, they, they announce that the, the pick has been traded to and that that team's on the clock and then they make that pick. I, I don't know why um, they can't do that in basketball. So the next time, you know, the CBA comes up, I'm hoping something like that can be, to me, can be fixed. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it bothers me more than most, but it really does. I, I think it's kind of goofy that they can't just say where the player's going. Give him his hat of his actual team and uh and and be done with it well that wraps up episode 31 of the sports card nation as always i want to take this moment to thank everybody listening to the program whether this is the first time you listen to the show or the 31st time you listen to the show uh, we appreciate you having uh, having us uh in your life for a little bit, whether it's on a commute home or to work, or you're sitting on your deck enjoying a, a cold beverage, whatever, whatever the case may be, uh, you, you devoted some time to the show, and we appreciate that. I want to thank everyone that's been on the show from interviews. I want to give a special shout out to this week's guest, Ken Carl, an amazing artist. If you haven't seen his work, which I'm pretty sure you probably have, but if you haven't, uh, check out uh, KenCarlSportsArt.com. But check out his stuff, amazing from from you know amateur athletes all the way up to the pro levels. He brings out that that raw emotion. 
does some great work and and works on commission uh, you know on cons- on, uh, can be hired so if you if you got a son or daughter or you got a favorite athlete that you want done and and, and painted and sketched and and put in card form as well um he's your guy he does just excellent work um he's doing a sh- like i said during the interview he's doing a, a card for the show uh can't wait to see what that how that turns out i'll, I'll definitely be obviously posting it and publishing it uh once he releases it um and and you know not only is a great artist but you know one thing i i try to do on on this program if if you haven't noticed is bring on great people you know it's one thing to be talented you know how many athletes do we know you know ever anyone that's in professional sports is obviously talented and then sometimes they're just not good people and and, and that is what it is but when I have people on the show, I, I want it, I want the best of, of both worlds. Not only just talented, but great people who care about other people, who do things and give back and, and that sort of thing. And Ken Carl uh, personifies that, and um, I was glad he was able to make some time for us. He's a very, very busy guy, as he told you. He's, he's backed almost up a, a month as far as... Uh, commission pieces go and and you know he took a, a good hour hour and a half to to speak to me and give us the show some time so uh, i want to thank ken carl definitely check him out you know the show's uh you know continuing to just grow and evolve and we've got other things on the horizon we've got uh, uh still a guest list uh that i i have to 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 get to and i appreciate the patience of some of these future guests that you'll hear on the show as I try to get, uh, you know, everyone in order. You know, when it comes to interviews, it, I could almost do one a day, uh, but, you know, I just, I can't do a show every day. Um, it's a nice thought, but but not really feasible. So we got some great guests uh, coming in, in, in further weeks, future weeks, so stay tuned for that. We got more giveaways, you know. Uh, we recently did the two Deep Fried Breaks giveaways, and I want to thank uh, Blake from Deep Fried Breaks for being uh, a great sponsor. And, and uh, you know, like that, he's he's part of the family and and giving back to, to the listeners uh, as well. That's always a, a great thing. So, uh, once again, we, you know, I want to thank you. Um, you know, this hobby is a great hobby. Regardless of some of the bad things that do occur, sometimes the 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 good far outweighs the bad, and that that's really uh, what it comes down to. There's always going to be something bad. I don't care what industry you're in, whether you're on Wall Street, a doctor, a lawyer. There's going to always be bad aspects of whatever industry you're in. This hobby's no exception, but the good far outweighs the bad, and at the end of the day. That's one of the most important things. So with that being said, we're going to close the show as we always do with uh, one of my favorite musicians, uh, Billy Joel, taking us out right before the outro. Billy? Um, Don't take any shit from anybody, and I mean it. You've been listening to the Sports Card Nation podcast. podcast. Join host John Newman next week as he gives you another jam-packed episode of all things related to the sports card hobby. And a little extra fun, too. Don't forget to check out the show on Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast. <laughs>